Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, in this session, we will discuss uh, uh, topic of forces from uh, O-level physics uh, for O-level and IGCSE students. And uh, uh, this book is uh, written by Tom Duncan and he Heather Kennett, for, published by Hodder's Education uh, in year 2021. And uh, in this uh, section 1.5 that is on page 32 we have some test yourself problems and from the first problem in figure this figure 1.53 over which the part of the graph does a spring balance works so this spring balance is working uh, from O to E in a proportionality limit of proportionality this point is a limit of proportionality so Uh, calculate the spring uh, constant of a spring which is stretched uh, 2 mm by a force of 4 newtons. So x is equal to 2 mm. So 2 divided by 1000 gives 2 into 10 to the power minus 3 meter. And uh, this f is 4 newtons. So this f is divided by this gives. 2 into 10 to the power 3 newton meter. So this is k is the k constant, spring constant. So spring constant is calculated as uh, 2000 newton per meter. Uh, second uh, problem, a 2 newton force is applied to a spring which has a spring constant of this 250 newtons meter. Calculate the extension of the spring in millimeters. So f uh, is equal to 2 newton, k spring constant is 250 newtons per meter and x is obtained in uh, millimeter so x is equal to force per newton uh, per spring constant so it gives 0 0.088 meters and by multiplying with 1000 it gives 8 mm uh, state two effects uh, which a force may have on an object force uh, is a push or a pull there are two different type of forces a force can cause an object at rest to move or if a body is already moving it can change its speed or direction of motion so this is uh, the impact of force on an object uh, make a stretch of a load extension graph for a spring and indicate the region over which the extension is proportional to the stretching force so uh, this is the extension uh, Point E is the limit of proportionality. This point E is beyond which the extension shows no linear behavior because the forces is uh, increasing, but the extension is uh, non-linearly behave. So, uh, so a minimum force is applied, but more extension is observed here. So we can see this in this region, more extension is observed. For very small force for this much force for this much force for very very small force but here extension is more so this is non-linear behavior so yeah, calculate the spring constant of a spring which is a stretch four centimeter by mass of 200 grams so this mass is converted into a weight that is 9.8 so it becomes 1.96 newton so x is four centimeter means 4 divided by 100 is equal to meters, 0 0.04 meter. So, spring constant is divided uh, is force per unit length is stretching. So, it gives 49 newtons meter. So, this k spring constant is obtained. Uh, define the limit of proportionality for a stretched spring. The limit of proportionality is the point at which beyond which the load extension graph becomes nonlinear. As discussed earlier, so Joe Daniel Handel. Helen are pulling a metal ring. Joe pulls with a force of 100 newton in one direction. Daniel with a force of 140 newton in the opposite direction. If the ring does not move, what force does Helen exert if she pulls in the same direction as Joe? So the Joe direct uh, force is 100 newtons, and this uh, Daniel force is 140 newton. Helen should have. 14 newtons so object will not move or in uh, or in no acceleration if net force is zero so force is jaw force 
Daniel force and Helen force. So a job force and Helen force in the one direction and Daniel force in opposite direction. So it gives net force as a zero. So net force zero. So this Helen force is in the same direction of job. A body a boy drags a suitcase along the ground with a force of 100 newton dragging with a force of 100 newton if the friction force opposing the motion of the suitcase is 50 newton what is the resultant forward force on the suitcase so 100 newtons minus 50 newton so the resultant frictional force after uh, with the opposing frictional force the forward directional the force is 50 newtons only a picture is supported by two vertical string like this if the weight of the picture is 50 newtons what is the force exerted by each spring if the, if, uh, if the strings are of same length and same size then it will have 25 newton and 25 newton uh, which is uh, against this 50 newtons that is downward and this upward force is tension uh, using a scale of 1 cm to represent 1 uh, 10 newton uh, find the size and direction of the resultant force of 30 newton and 40 newton so 1 cm so 30 newton is 3 cm and 40 newton is 4 cm so this is 30 newton is 3 cm and 40 newton is 4 cm and this is perpendicular so the resultant is 5 cm so it is 50 newton so it can also be obtained through this way it is also using Pythagoras theorem also giving the results of 50 Newton and by this uh, graphical representation it also gives 5 cm that is 50 Newton uh, put, now put this into practice a box of mass 50 kg has a constant velocity when it uh, pushed along a table by a force of uh, 8 Newton when the push is increased to 10 Newton calculate the resultant force and the resultant force so so this uh, uh, velocity is constant and 8 newtons push along a table by force of when the push is increased to 10 newtons so the 2 newton force is increased so initially the resultant frictional is opposing the motion so the force was net force was 0 so now force is increased so 2 newton increase so the acceleration will produce so this net force increase so acceleration will produce 2 newton by 5 kilogram the weight is given as 5 kilogram so acceleration is 0.4 meters per second uh, per second square so this increase because of the force applied initially the force was balanced so this has increased from 8 newtons to this so the acceleration will produce and resultant force will be 2 newton because uh, it was not uh, uh, friction force is opposing force and the force produced a constant acceleration in a straight line of 0.5 meters and uh, meters square on a block of mass 7 kg calculate the value of uh, force so force uh, we have to find the force and uh, constant L acceleration is straight line is given as 0.5 meters per second square and the mass is given as 7 kg so f is equal to m a so this m is 7 kg acceleration is 0.5 this is 3.5 newton so test yourselves page 37 which is one of the diagram figure this shows the arrangement of force that gives the block of mass m the greatest acceleration which one will give the greatest acceleration this uh, here we see this 30 newton and 20 newton so it gives 50 newton resultant in this direction this is gives 22 newtons this gives uh, net 2 newtons which is very low this gives 40 newton here and 20 newton is there the net resultant force in this direction is 20 newton but here in this case this is 30 newton and 20 newton in the same direction so this is 50 newton so the most force is applying on this mass is in part d that is 50 newton so, it, so it will produce very high acceleration so in figure 1.1512 uh, if p is a force of 20 newton then the object move with a constant velocity uh, 
constant velocity what is the value of the opposing force so uh, in, in, uh, if p is a force of 20 newton an object moving with a constant velocity constant velocity means this is constant so if we take the differential of this it gives zero so uh, d by dt of a constant uh, velocity will give a zero change so acceleration is zero if the constant velocity means acceleration this is acceleration this is basically the acceleration so acceleration is zero so this net force is zero applying it. the opposing force is 20 newton so that the resultant or net force on the object is zero move with the constant velocity if a force is exerting on an object with a 20 newton an object is moving with a constant velocity means there is no acceleration constant velocity means no acceleration means no net force so the net force is zero and the opposing force is 20 newton so the resultant net force on the object is zero and when resultant force produces an acceleration of 5 meters per second in a car of mass uh, 1000 grams so this so we have to find the uh, resultant force so acceleration is 5 meters per second square and mass is 1000 kilograms so the resultant force is 1000 kilogram and 5 meters per second square that is 5000 newton newton what acceleration is produced in a mass of 2 kilogram by resultant force of 30 newton so resultant force is 30 newton and mass is 2 kg so acceleration has to find acceleration is equal to resultant force divided by mass so this gives 15 meters per second square a block of mass 500 grams is pulled from rest on a horizontal frictionless frictionless bench by a steady force f and reaches a speed of 8 meters per second in two seconds calculate the acceleration and the value of force so the mass is given as 500 grams is pulled from rest so initially velocity was zero at rest from rest on a horizontal frictionless frictionless bench so the friction is not there by a steady state force f and reaches a speed of this in two seconds so the acceleration is v minus u divided by t so 8 minus 0 divided by 2 in 4 second per uh, meters per second is the acceleration so here from rest in first second it will be 4 meters per second and the next se uh, second uh, it will be 8 meters per second so acceleration is this so this acceleration is multiplied by the mass 500 grams that is equivalent to 0.5 kilogram and it is 2 newton uh, test yourself explain the condition under which frictions occurs so the friction is a force that opposes one surface moving or trying to move over another so one surface uh, is uh, moving uh, on other surface it gives friction it can be helpful or a hindrance some uh, frictions are uh, helpful for various purposes we can we could not walk if there was no friction between the soles of our shoe and the ground so that friction helps us to move on the uh, ground if our feet would slip backward as they tend to when we walk on ice so it difficult to uh, walk on the ice because of less friction on the other hand engineers try to reduce friction to a minimum in a moving of part of machinery by using lubricating oil and ball bearings so somewhere we do not want high friction we want to reduce the friction so in that cases uh, we use lubricants and ball bearings to reduce frictions between moving and static parts so this way it helps uh, name two effects uh, resulting from solid friction solid friction can be described as a force between the two surfaces that may impede motion and produce heating so it produces impede motion and produce heating two type of frictions is starting or static friction and sliding or dynamic friction so these are the two types of friction static friction and dynamic friction or also called sliding friction a car is moving uh, at a constant speed along a straight road. Describe how the forces acting on the car is influence the speed of the car. 
with a constant speed along a straight route describe how the forces acting on the car influence the speed of the car drag means friction or drag means increases as the speed of the object increases and act to reduce acceleration and slow down the object so this way it helps so when we increase the speed uh, friction increases or it reduces acceleration and slow down the object Uh, in the next session we will uh, cover from the from this uh, test yourself from 60 problem number 16